Okay, now we're going to take a look at gauges. So to do that, you'll notice there is no gauge wizard. That should be a hint. Gauges uh, take a lot of effort um, to uh, come through and configure as compared to charts, etc. So we'll go into blank report down here and I'm going to add a data set. I've created a new data set. We'll go into we'll browse. Created a new data set um, using the same technology that we've used before. Let's go into shared data sets. And now this new data set I've called, uh, let's see, Matheno Group, it's OLAP, um, sales quantity, return quantity. And what I'm doing down here is I'm bringing back two measures, the sales quantity and the return quantity so that I can use that within my gauge. And I'll say okay, and now I've got my data set down here. And again, I'll just go over to the insert menu. Notice there's no wizard for a gauge. Let's uh, get rid of the footer. And let's expand our working document a little bit. So now we'll select gauge and we'll come down and we'll draw that. And we're going to go in uh, initially with the linear gauge. That said, the radial gauges are uh, essentially the same thing. They're just a different methodology of doing the display. So we'll come through and do this linear gauge. And I'll say OK. And there we have the gauge up and showing. So here we have a gauge, and if we run it, nothing uh, very interesting there. Back over to designs. So now if we click within the gauge, we get down here to the values, and let's change this pointer one over to sales quantity. Just to make sure it works, we'll run it. And now the slide's all the way across. Let's go through and just examine some things in here. If I select this and expand it on out, See this? It's more visible now. And again, if I run it on across, now it's more visible. The labels across the top. One of the problems of gauges is they get cluttered very quickly. Pause a second and change a property. Okay, I'll be pausing off and on as I go through here because one of the problems of gauges is clicking on the right thing. What I did was I just went in here and I just right clicked and I added a label which you see right here. And this label is going to help us understand what this number is up in here. So now we're going to go into that label and we're going to select Label Properties. And I'm going to go into the Expression Builder down here. I'll select Data Sets, Sales Sum, Sales Quantity. I'll double click it, say OK. OK again, notice it's changed to an expression. And now when I run, I see what my sales quantity is. I'll go back over to Design. I can come back here into this label. Label properties, and I've got the different properties, my font, everything's uh, the same. And normally you're going to want to leave all this autofill in here. And here's back over on my general, you see anchor label two, and I'm tying it into linear gauge one. So we're going to say OK. OK, I went back in just to show you some of this auto size stuff. And I changed my VB code to, uh, so I have a concatenation down here so that my label would read order count is and equals. And if I come through and say that, and now I run it, you see it's, it's not legible down in here. It's because the label is just going to take up too much of the space. So let's go through and fix that and change this on out. Label properties, we'll just dump out all the concatenation baloney. And hope I didn't hose anything else. <clears throat> and we'll run it and there we've got it. Okay, let's move on. Uh, by the way, before we move on, make note of the number that we have down here. Okay, I've changed the scale up some here, and it takes a little bit of playing around, which is why I didn't uh, make you suffer through watching all the changes. Let's go ahead and run the gauge, and I'm going to show you what I've got down here. Now you see the pointers down here, and I've got 53, and here's this little reference number that I have. By the way, you didn't have to put that in the scale, and a lot of times you'll eliminate that. You'll put it down anywhere in an expression box that you can use so you can see the number you want to get to. Let me show you what that did for us. In here in the scale properties, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go into scale properties. These are the changes that I made because I had you write down that number. <clears throat> I put in a, a, a minimum of 53 million and a max of 58 million. <clears throat> Just to show you a change, let's come through and do this. 
and we're in at 56 million <clears throat> multiple by scale by one I also changed uh, let's see the number down here I changed to number show values in thousands right and I just I got rid of my decimal places etc and I could use comma separator but that's really not a big deal you see all this other stuff my minor tick marks and my major tick marks but the main thing I did is you want to change this number and that number and the only way you're going to be able to figure that out is to be able to run the query or actually come back and uh, give yourself a little hint so let's say okay and by the way I, I stretched out the box otherwise you see if you don't so I'm going to stretch this out now so I've got a little cleaner display and let's run it and there we've got so now we know we've got we've got this tick mark and there's 56 and she's down here and that's where she is right now and this would be like you know where we're shooting for and this is what we have let's go back over to design okay let's add another pointer in here I'm back over here I'm just gonna right click and I'm going to go in first off let's add a scale now let's don't that'll hose me let's go in here at this point and add a pointer and now we've got that pointer in here and I can tie this pointer into sales return quantity and let's run and see what happens all right so now I'm gonna to have to change the design let's go back over to design we'll take this pointer I'm gonna go into pointer properties and all we'll do is just change the color so it's easy to see uh, let's go with blue sounds fine I don't care and we'll run it and now you see there's this is down at zero which is not really accurate to make that really work we're going to have to come in here and we, we would do would we would add another scale in here or we could add another gauge adjacent child etc so that we would have two different um gauges one showing my discount returns i'm sorry my uh, orders returns and one showing the others and you see this can get fairly busy but that that said the main point you should be able to get out of this is your gauges take a tremendous amount of uh, design time even though they have that cool look to them one last thing I want to show you on these linear scales before we move on is if I right click in here you notice within a uh, scale there's no way to come through and change the scale type Whereas in a chart, I can right click and easily change the uh, chart types. 